the sprayer hooked up, had to do some troubleshooting on it, had to replace my solenoid. Um, everything seems to be working correctly now. Um, kind of a rookie move on my part because this is only my second year dealing with a sprayer with booms on it. Take the tips off and flow water through it. I was up and down this boom like a harmonica trying to get all the tips to spray evenly and it just had little particles of trash in it. So just a piece of advice, take all the tips off, let it flow for a few minutes, make sure your tips are clean, put them back on and be good to go. I waste a lot of time battling that. Um, doing the Resilon three ounces to the acre. I, it's January 27th. I was hoping to have this out by January 15th. If you're familiar with Resilon, it's recommended to put it out Valentine's and Labor Day. Well, I certainly didn't come up with this strategy on my own. I somehow crossed paths and so thankful for it with one of the researchers and developers of Resilon. And he suggested put it out in January, put it out in June after your first cutting, and then your whole growing season, pre-season and growing season is covered. Um, if you put it out February 14th and then around Labor Day in September, once you put it out in September, it's just kind of leeching on through the winter, which is not personally my growing season, so it really doesn't matter to me. And this um, from February to September is seven months. So that's a long time to kind of, your coverage is kind of getting weaker, where from January to June is five months, and you know, you kind of get that nice strong second punch in there and then carries you out through the rest of your growing season. So that's my strategy. I did not come up with it. I'm following very guided directions and I'm very thankful for it. And um, we had good, good success with the Resilon last year. This is just my second full year using it and um, just had a little bit of breakthrough crabgrass and a little bit of breakthrough foxtail. But some of the foxtail was perennial. It was not the annual variety. So I had some other um, kind of tactics of taking care of that. So the breeze has died down. I'm fixing to get started and I've got seven tanks to put out. So if I can get one or two put out today, nothing but success. And hopefully I can finish up tomorrow supposed to be getting more snow tomorrow night so if we get more snow on top of this resolon let it sink into the ground man it would just be perfect <music> continuation of our prep for 2022 hay season um, I'm going to go ahead and drain the oil out of the disc mower so you've got to drain the oil out of the cutter bar and the gearbox and pretty simple I've already warmed all the oil up so just tilt it down let oil drain down into the cutter bar before you engage it and then get her back level let her warm up for a few minutes Put it back in the upright position and in this position you can drain the bar and the gearbox so pretty simple and you can fill the the bar in the upright position so the only thing you need to lay it down for is to refill the gearbox so pretty pretty easy not a whole lot of steps which is which is what i need not a whole lot of steps um so this is going to be our drain plug for our cutter bar and then there's your fill plug so pretty easy and uh, see if we can get those broke loose without too many complications. 
All right, while the oil's draining out the disc mower, I want to show y'all something we added to the 5075E. This tractor was a battery eating machine. Dad bought it back in 2018, and it's been through three batteries, and we tried to hunt down what was draining it, never could find it. We thought it was the radio. We pulled fuses. We did everything we could think of to do, and still yet, it would either be hard to start or just wouldn't start at all. So I thought we are gonna be on battery number four, but we did get it charged back up and I wanna show you what we added. All right, so we added the Flaming River battery shut off and my husband was nice enough to make me this bracket and even painted it Johnny D green so it looks like it was made to be there. And I'll show you these cables that we had made. So we got this cable from Battery Cable USA. Uh, initially, we thought we were gonna have to route from the battery box up. And then when we started doing surgery on it, realized we could have just used a 12 inch cable, but this works nice. We just got the extra kind of cooled up here, but you can get any color cable, size cable, any style in, any size in, like you can really customize it. And you can uh, buy these nice boots to keep everything protected. So that was a really good find. Okay, so the last thing I removed was the pressure relief, and I got it nice and clean, sprayed it off with some brake cleaner, check down in there, make sure there's no crust, you can see that little ball, and you just make sure that it moves nice and free, and it does, and it's free of any debris, so it's ready to be put back in. So we got another spray day. It's March the 8th and we got a little rain moving in later on this evening. So of course everything's at a full sprint and hustle trying to get everything done. But today we're doing glyphosate, two quarts to the acre. And I didn't have a whole lot of late winter, early spring grasses pop up, but we did have a, a nice string of 80 degree days the end of February and over the last week. So some stuff was wanting to to pop up uh, as well as the coastal was starting to green up and it's way too early for that it's going to be 20 degrees at night over the weekend so it's fixing to get in the master reset button anyways i guess i'm just kind of helping it along but i had some vetch popping up and i don't want that nothing wrong with vetch but it's not what we're growing and it's hard as heck to get to dry and grass hay so it's got to go so um not a whole lot of undesirable grasses came up, but enough. Plus, we're wanting to burn the fields off here in about another 10 days to two weeks. And um, so I need it to be as dry and dormant and brown and dead as I can get it. So that's what we're doing today. Probably not going to be a whole lot of video footage just because it's just a lot of spray and it's kind of all the same. Plus, I'm working at a hustle. <laughs> this video up hopefully we'll be done spraying for a little bit and we're moving on to a whole nother thing we're going to get these fields ready to get them burned off but for the end of this doing some shout outs had a couple farms and a couple folks that were so kind to send me some of their stickers and share their farm logos with me so a couple I got here finally got my board put up but we've got two stickers from Thomas Farms and that's in Leoma Tennessee and he farms year-round never quits this guy's got it going on. Mr. Ron Crosley, Rural Life with Ron. Check out his channel. He's kind of slowed down for the year with his farming stuff, but he's always got other stuff going on, working in his shop all the time. And then we've got 
Richard Heisinger with Heisinger Farms out of Kentucky. He's got something going on all the time. If he's not planting something, harvesting something, he's using his sawmill. So a lot of cool channels there. And I will put the link to all of those channels in the description of this video. Please check them out. We are small potatoes. Those folks have it going on full time, all the time. Just really, really cool stuff you can see on their channel. So take care. We're going to get back to work. We're going to get these fields ready to be burned off. Thank <laughs> you.